Hello good people, as promised, I'm going to show you my carpentry proposal from House of Chai's today. I intended to show you the styling proposal as well, but as I was prepping for this video, it got a bit lengthy. So I'm just going to do that on the next video. Maybe together with the styling of the house as well, let's see. Also, I have some snippets here and there from when the renovation was being done. So I'll be showing you footage uh, relating to what I'm talking about in terms of carpentry. So if you're ready, let's go. So this right here is our carpentry and fittings proposal. So starting off with the entryway, let me first show you how our entryway looked like previously. So as you can tell, they actually have their main door inside instead. And when you enter the house, you will see this very narrow walkway uh, which feels very congested. Immediately to your right is the storeroom followed by either a left or a right, which the right would bring you to the kitchen and the left would bring you to the living room. Like I showed in the previous video, we did some hacking and we moved the walkway uh, a little bit to the right so that we can leave a bit of space here to put our shoe rack. So the area here was really used more like an outdoor space. For us, we didn't want that because I think it will introduce a lot of dust into the house. And so we closed it up. It is still a separate area. As you can see from here, we did not actually level the ground. And this space would be designated for us to uh, put on or remove our shoes. And I wanted a beautiful archway because I want it to greet us when we come home. Yes, archways are very trendy nowadays, but um, I think it also introduces this feeling of coziness. So moving on. For the kitchen, this was what was being proposed and yes, this looks exactly like my kitchen now. As you might or might not know, symmetry is actually very important when it comes to interior design. Even if you do not realize it, when things are symmetrical, it's actually very pleasing to your eye. Showing you how our kitchen looked like previously. So like I said, when you turn to the right, it will bring you into the kitchen, which looked really old and outdated. Um, their sink was right to the corner and their fridge was on the other side. Again, if you watched my previous video, you would know that I hacked the entire wall to make this open concept kitchen. Yes, I know I can't do heavy cooking. I've heard it many, many, many times. Although this made everything so much more spacious, but it also took away one whole wall of cabinet and counter space you might look at this and think that no why you have a lot of counter space here here and here and your island as well but um, I will not try to explain myself I will show you during the home tour you will know what I mean since we're on the topic I just want to address why the home tour is taking so long um, first things first because we intend to uh, redo the entire study honestly I was not very satisfied with how it was done up previously so we are going to redo that, that will take some time and also we are still in the process of doing the styling for my home so you might ask, but you've already moved in so long ago, wasn't it already long done? Um, I just felt so overwhelmed. Uh, the reason why I'm saying I instead of we is because I can only speak for myself but I'm sure Brian also felt very overwhelmed and there's just many things going on that I really do not want to talk about but I am very very well aware that my viewers, my dear viewers, really really look forward to the home tour. Uh, I, I myself really look forward to it as well, trust me. But I only want to present the best to you guys, so which is why I don't want to do a half ass job and just be like, oh, home tour for the views, for the likes. Um, no, that is not who I am. But trust me, it is definitely coming. Um, I do not want to, you know, raise your expectations by telling you, oh, it will be soon because it will not be soon. It will probably be sometime later this year. That being said, I hope you still continue to show love to me and support for my other videos, which I also put a lot of heart and soul into so yeah um, enough of the sidetrack let's continue for the countertop if you're curious it's quartz um, and the backsplash it's tau and then for the cabinets it's all laminate for these two cabinets here why they look different is because I requested for fluted glass panels I wanted to just introduce some texture instead of having the whole lot of just laminated cabinets. This is how the fluted glass looks like. I did the same for the door on my study, which I'll show you in a bit. Also, they got me to think about how to utilize the space because they need to know what kind of drawers or shelving to install. So I needed to think about, okay, where I'm going to put my pots and pans, where am I going to put my snacks, my dry goods, condiments, etc. Um, by the way, over here, we just did open shelving, which I think if you watch my other vlogs, you would have probably seen. Remember when I said in my other video that it's important to buy your bigger appliances first? So see, this is precisely why, because without your confirmed appliance uh, measurements, they are unable to fit your appliances into your cabinetry perfectly. 
Next is um, I think what everybody loves which is the island. Um, the island has been really popular amongst friends and family. I think it's really the centerpiece to our home and the top is quartz as well but it's a different grain of quartz and then for the cabinets it's also in the same laminate so from the side you can see the fluted details so relating this back to our mood board video where it was proposed to us and this was definitely one thing that we told HOC we wanted on our island and as for the counter uh, why is it jutting out a little is because this is where uh, our bar chairs are going to go so my girlfriends when they come over some of them will actually sit there and have conversations with me as I cook and prep their dinner and in future you know if we have kids they can sit there and while we serve them breakfast I think figuring out what design you want for your house is pretty easy you know you just scroll through Pinterest have a look here and there but ultimately when it comes down to the execution measuring everything down to the mm to the t uh, you really need a group of very seasoned and meticulous professionals so we are very thankful to of course our designers contractor and carpenters so for yourself if you're watching and you are looking to renovate your own home as well but have yet to find your dream ID here's how today's sponsor Home Trust can help you Home Trust is Singapore's leading ID platform bringing you real reviews from real homeowners. It can save you precious time and money by shortlisting top-rated interior designers based on your project's budget and style. You can further shorten this process by going straight to their Get Recommendations feature, pick your preferred style and features for your new home, and Home Trust will match your specific requirements with their database of interior designers. The interior designers will then reach out to you with their design proposals and all you have to do is to follow up with those that you are interested in. And if you have any burning questions or maybe just need some advice, you can post in their forum where a community of homeowners alike will chat with you. You can visit their website at www.hometrust.sg or visit the link in the description below. Moving on to the next area of the home which is our master bedroom. For our master bedroom, we didn't have a lot of built-ins other than the wardrobe and the vanity itself. So for the wardrobe design, again, you can see everything is very symmetrical. In fact, the bottom row of drawers, they're not actually drawers. The panels are just designed this way to look symmetrical to the cabinets on top. So they told me to think about how I wanted to utilize my wardrobe space. This was my final sketch. <laughs> very cute. And this is the mock-up that I did up. I think comparing to other girls, I can quite confidently say that I don't have a lot of clothes, bags and shoes so I don't need a lot of space but of course um, Brian needs even lesser so his is just this portion over here whereas mine is this and the middle one we share for things like my long dresses and on the side will be our towels and whatnot. For the wardrobe on top, it's for things like our pillows, um, bed sheets and luggages. The only reason we could achieve such a large wardrobe space is also because we hacked uh, the middle wall to merge both rooms. Again, uh, you can watch my previous video where I talked about the layout of our home. Moving on to our vanity, so the first thing you'll realise is that the sink is on the outside instead of inside the toilet. The counter is quartz and then I have two drawers on the side. So although you can see three drawers but the bottom two drawers uh, actually one and I requested for a deep drawer where I can store my hair dryer and styling tools because I think in the past it was always so messy with the wires all over the place so that was the one thing that I really wanted for my vanity so putting the sink out here we actually need to get approval from HDB and I was highly recommended to get waterproofing done on these cabinets because if I'm gonna have water splashing around here every day um, I was told that you know the laminate would deteriorate pretty quickly also here on the side is actually where our AC vent is so they also did up matching fake cabinets uh, to cover up the AC vent. Moving on to the toilet itself, previously this master bath was completely used as a storeroom. It was not even being utilized for many many years. The reason why we put the sink outside is because uh, you can move the shower, you can move the sink, however you cannot move the toilet. So because of how the toilet was fixed in this particular spot, uh, it made it very difficult for us to walk around it. If we put the vanity here and then the door opens to the other side, we'll be blocking the entrance to the shower. Yes, when the door closes, we can still enter but it will still be very cramped and if we put it on this side of the wall, then where we go to the toilet, it's gonna be very cramped. 
I even thought of putting the shower right at the side and so that the vanity can fit in as well but then that would mean that I'll have a very cramped shower. This issue being the same for the common bathroom resulted in the shower in the common bath to be really cramped and I was not ready to have another cramped shower in the master bedroom so we made the executive decision to move the sink up into the open. Also because this is not a BTO, the water pipes are of course being exposed. I had this huge dilemma like back and forth with our contractor, him telling me that you really don't want to cover it up, you know, if something happens, you're gonna have to pay a lot to hack all the towels, to remove it, you're gonna regret. Well, I know that that's the best of my interest, but I really cannot face those pipes every day. It's just me, okay? It's just me. So, um, in the end, we came to a compromise. We did like a half towel, half box up style, so that if really choi need be, then um, I will still be able to, or rather, HDB will still be able to assess the pipes. I actually saw this beautiful arch screen but I think it cost extra so in the end we just settled with a normal rectangular shower screen. So there is this space behind the door that is empty. That is where I put in this lovely shelving for some plants and some decor as well as um, my female products so that you know when I am on my womanly period I can assess to my tampons and my pads within the reach one arm's length. It has been very convenient. I love it. Oh my god, love it. Next is the common bath. So for the common bath, uh, it was a bit more complicated for the box up because you see that two windows over there. Um, if we did the box up, it would cover up the windows uh, which actually resulted in lesser light coming into the bathroom. I was quite uh, adamant about doing that in the beginning but I think light or pipe, light or pipe, mm. I will sacrifice the light and cover up the pipe. Yeah, so that is what we did. Again, yes, in the half box up, half towel look. Also, also, when my contractor told me to install the exhaust fan, I was like, huh, so ugly. But I tell you, it works okay. Uh, this is how it looked like previously. Uh, so see, because of where the toilet is being placed, right, uh, we resulted in just having a very tiny vanity a very tiny mirror but it's okay because this toilet is largely used by Brian so currently because we have no kids yet uh, Brian's bathroom is the one outside and my bathroom is the one inside so he can dirty it however he wants I don't care I don't see it out of sight out of mind I'm happy yeah so see this is what I mean by it's a cramped shower and sometimes when he's showering I can hear boom <laughs> On the outside, I can hear that. I think his elbows or maybe his peak will too big bang against the shower screen. I think it's quite dangerous, isn't it? So for the common bath, um, it has a feature wall or accent wall, whatever you want to call it. This wall on this side is actually full herringbone from top to bottom. The herringbone design really just caught my eye and has been resonating and is still resonating in my heart till now. Love, love, love my herringbone wall. I was just fed up with that tiny vanity but oh well. Other than that, the proposal also included what kind of doors we have selected. We used the shaker style for all our cabinetry and doors. Looking at your layout, you also have to think about whether you would want the door to swing left or right. What would be better for you living in it day to day? And then for the study, okay, so the study, when friends come over, they will ask like, oh, you all hacked down the wall to put in this door? No, actually, it was already like that. Yeah, so the study was already, the wall was already not there. So we decided to install an aluminium bifold door. I again incorporated the fluted uh, glass panels because I just love it. So these are some of the pins I had. So initially it was proposed to me to do a half clear, half fluted look. But I think I decided on the full fluted glass look because I wanted to have more privacy. And the reason why I wanted to use glass instead of having a normal door is because ultimately even if I close the door, the light will still travel through the living room. Being in the living room, you can still feel as though the house is very big and very spacious compared to if I closed off the study entirely. So that's that. We're almost at the end. We're only left with curtains and some miscellaneous stuff. So, so for curtains and blinds, HOC uh, recommended everyday curtains which 
I love them. They're very efficient, very friendly, very prompt. So different blinds can really exude a different type of look and uh, vibe. You have Venetian blinds, you have bamboo roll-up blinds, you have Roman blinds. For us, we chose Venetian blinds. We didn't want to overcomplicate our space. And for curtains, you have the ripple fold or the double pleats. Double pleats is really, really common. I think used almost everywhere. I was so attracted to the ripple fold, but I think because they cost so much more, in the end, we just decided to go with the double pleats. I was invited down to take a look at all the swatches. They have this beautiful um, studio at Holland V area. It's like I told him, oh, I want a sheer curtain for my living room and I want blackout curtains for my bedroom. What kind of color scheme I want and he was very quick to help me come to a decision. Their installer was so quick, he just came in, pop, 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 and then he was done. I think it took him like maybe half an hour to install one, two, three, four, five sets of blinds and curtains. Another tip that you might or might not already know is that when you're installing curtains, you want to install them all the way up and all the way down. Uh, you don't have to do so for blinds but for curtains, it just makes your home look more expensive because it makes your ceilings look taller. We overlaid um, vinyl for our entire home other than of course the bathrooms and the access balcony. It's one same vinyl, one same look which results in our home looking even bigger because it just draws your eye all the way to the end. And for vinyl, we decided on up floor. We went down to their showroom as well. Uh, they don't have a lot of options but their options are so beautiful. We went with this particular colour in the end. The lady was uh, adorable. She, just, she still did like a fire test to show us how it was fireproof, scratch proof, etc. The styling is still well underway. Uh, now I'm gonna have a headache about that because I'm gonna think about how to style up my home. What do I want here? What do I want there? This empty space, do I put wall art or macrame or what do I put? Macrame not really because it's quite boho. So yes, that is everything. I hope you have enjoyed watching today's video. If you did, like and subscribe, drop a comment down below, share it with your friends, help a girl out. And as always, take good care and I'll see you soon. Bye!